So for me, the, the journey kind of started as a 12 year old um, when um, I was doing pretty badly at school and my teachers liked to remind me that I was. Um, and um, I was eventually dragged to, to the local optician by my mother to get an eye test because she, she thought it may be that I'm not seeing and I was just due a regular checkup. Um, and when I went there, the optometrist was shocked at how poor my sight was. I could basically see and focus that, that far away. Um, wow. And, uh, and they said, how on earth have you managed for so long? And um, the thing is, as a child, you don't know what you're not seeing. Um, so I didn't really have normal sight to compare to. Um, so when they put the trial lenses on, um, I, the kind of world suddenly came into focus and they, they said, just go and stand outside. So I went and stood on the, uh, the doorway to the, to the shop that I was in and suddenly I could see all these trees had leaves on them. Um, and I just couldn't believe what I was missing. Um, and I'd resisted the idea of going to the optometrist because I wasn't so keen on the idea of wearing glasses, not because I thought I would see differently, but because I thought I would look different. And, yeah. and as the only uh, brown boy in my school, I was quite keen to not look any more different than I already did. Um, yes. So I've managed to basically avoid an eye test for a good two and a bit years. Um, wow. But when I did eventually get a pair of glasses, my life completely changed. I, you know, I went from generally failing at school to uh, starting to do really well. Um, my social life changed, my friendships improved. Um, and that same year I was in Egypt where both my parents are from. And, and I, I just suddenly noticed no one else was wearing glasses. Um, and also I was at an age where uh, the bubble I was growing up in was starting to burst a bit. I kind of realized that I was one of the privileged few to have kind of a secure home, family life, school, all of those things. Um, and that, that wasn't true for everyone. Um, and it really started to bother me. Um, and it, it bothered me so much that it started to eat me up a bit. And I, um, wow. couldn't, I, I was just grappling with this uh, constant question of, you know, why me? But in the why me did I get so much? Um, why wasn't I born here? Why wasn't I born in different circumstances when I wouldn't have had all of this? Um, wow. And I, I couldn't really connect. I had no language to really express what I was feeling. Um, and it took me quite a few years kind of dealing with this emotion of uh, there being a very different world to the one that I was in. Um, and it was probably late teens where I thought, well, I'm either going to spend my life feeling bad about this or I'm going to do something about it. Um, mm. And so that's where I decided I would kind of commit my life to trying to, to play some small part in solving this injustice. Um, and kind of in that journey, I started to, to read a lot more about it, learn a lot more, lot more about it, and uh, decided I wanted to become an eye surgeon, and partly because so many of the people in the world who were blind didn't need to be. Um, so, you know, of the nearly 40 million blind four and five of them unnecessarily so from conditions that were totally treatable or preventable. Wow. Um, and then about a third of the planet, two and a half billion people uh, could see better if they could get a pair of glasses, um, which is a 700 year old invention. Yet yeah, still people can't get them. Um, yeah. So wow. I was thinking how, how on earth is it we've made all these incredible advances in technology yet there's, a technology like glasses that's 700 years old. There is uh, huge advances in cataract surgery in the last 100 years that means no one should go blind from cataracts or not be able to see properly because they can't get glasses, yet we haven't solved that problem. Um, so I guess I became pretty obsessed with trying to understand the root causes of that and, and trying to do something towards solving it. Um, so that kind of professional journey started as becoming a doctor, go through medical school, qualifying as a general surgeon, then as an eye surgeon. Um, and then uh, when, I were, when I'd been working as an eye surgeon for around seven years, I was at the point of getting um, a consultant post in the UK, about a year away from, from that, um, that I kind of went back to the driver to understand what this was and the, this idea that the world wasn't the same 
um, everywhere you went. And I had this kind of strong desire to work in sub-Saharan Africa. Um, and so uh, I joined the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine to do a PhD um, to really understand population health, which is very different to individual health. So how do you manage the health of millions of people rather than the individual that's you know, in front of you in, in the consultation room or on the operating table? Um, so it really went from the micro to the macro. So very much, you know, quite literally looking down a microscope to operate on somebody's eye to look in macro at millions of people and saying, how do you understand what the barriers are to them getting services? Uh, how do you overcome those barriers? What what kind of services are they already getting? How well are they working? Um, and so to really understand that, I kind of went into, into a PhD, um, which ended up uh, with me moving to Kenya with my young family, um, establishing 100 wow. temporary eye clinics. Um, and in those 100 temporary eye clinics, we did incredibly detailed eye assessments um, on around 5,000 people. Um, and um, in the midst of that, I became all, all the theoretical knowledge I had around why people weren't accessing eye health became much more uh, uh, real. It went from theoretical to experiential. Um, I'd be seeing people who had been blind for you know 10, 15 years, um, totally unnecessarily because we could do an operation that would last 10 minutes and they'd have their sight back. Um, and I'd be seeing you know dozens of people like that every single day. Um, and that would always drive this same mix of emotion, one of great excitement that you know here in front of me is someone who's been in the dark for 10, 15 years and tomorrow they'll see. Um, and you know that it was a a great feeling to know that you could do that. Yet yeah, at the same time, it's like why? Why had they waited for so long? They've lost so much of their life. Um, and um, what about all the people I'm never going to get to see because I won't be here forever? And we're literally tipped the iceberg. Um, and I trained a team of 15 people. I had over a hundred thousand pounds worth of eye equipment with me, and this was to do an extensive research project. It was not a sustainable way of building out capacity for sustainable services. Um, and so this idea that I'd had a couple of years earlier started to grow, which was that maybe I could use mobile technology to replace what I was doing. So replacing the need to have a specialist doctor, a specialist team with specialist equipment in hard to reach places where there's no roads, no electricity, um, how do you still find the people that you need to and how do you connect them to the people they need to be connected to? Um, and at the time, mobile phones were just becoming the new thing. Um, and as I looked around in the most remote places that we'd worked, sometimes four hours away, three, hour, three hours of which were off-road, would get there, there'd be no electricity, no water supply, but there'd be perfect mobile signal. Um, and the mobile signal would be so good that I would be able to do video calls with my PhD supervisors back in London from a rural village wow. in Kenya. So it's got me thinking maybe I could tap into this incredible new network of connectivity, but to deliver the services that were, were greatly needed. Um, and so started basically prototyping a whole range of things from different apps that could measure vision, different tools that could help you see inside the eye. Um, and over a number of years, we iterated and improved and, and tested and, and tested it against all the standard kit that I had um, to the point where we had stuff that really worked. Um, and that was really the point at which the journey with Peak began.